Good morning. I don't even know if I'm on here. This is a... So good morning to what we have no idea what's about to happen in here. But what, what a joy to see all of you this morning. Some people asked if we get to count all the dogs in the worship attendance, and I said, they got four paws, we're counting them twice. So... So, so make sure if the ushers come by, you, you hold them up so we can see them this morning. 
Uh, I'm Pastor Gary Sandberg, and it's a privilege to serve here uh, alongside our pastoral intern, Rachel Patterson, who's bringing the proclamation with a couple of other friends this morning as well, and a guest appearance by St. Francis this morning. So we are delighted to share this opportunity of worship and blessing of the animals today. Just a couple of notes for our life together. We, in our prayers, we will have the Gossman family, Mark Gossman, after an illness, just passed away right over the weekend. So we remember Amy and his family in our prayers that worship service, the funeral service will be Wednesday, likely here at 10 o'clock. We're still making the final arrangements for all of that. Otherwise, uh, just know in our worship service, if you're used to our traditional 1030 worship service, this probably won't look much like that at all right now, but you do have a worship bulletin that will carry us all through. We're delighted to have so many of our musical groups, our kids' music and chancel choir here, providing wonderful music as we worship together this morning, and we expect a couple of barks and howls to join in along the way as all of that takes place this morning. Throughout the service, there are times when you'll be invited to stand. Obviously, obviously, if it's more appropriate or more comfortable for you to remain seated during those times, please feel free to remain seated during those times of our worship life together this morning. And just a note, in case you're looking at it uh, uh, on the way through, there will be a, a brief liturgy and communion after the service. So if you'd like to have communion, we will have ascending and dismissal but then we'll invite people to come up around the altar area if they'd like to have communion. We know some of you with animals probably will feel like you've had enough and that's okay. Um, and, and otherwise, if you're here with a, you know, somebody else and you both want communion, if one of you comes up without the animal and you trade off and go back, you'll have plenty of time to do that. We'll stay as long as people would like to be sharing in communion this morning. I think that might be all of the important things to know as we prepare ourselves for worship today. So we're going to get right into it with our gathering hymn. It's hymn number 824, This Is My Father's World. We invite you, if it's comfortable, to, to face the back and face the processional cross as we join in singing, and we do invite you to stand.
Please be seated for our cherub anthem. Our first lesson is found on page 574 in the Old Testament in the Bible in front of you. It's from Psalm 50, page 574. Psalm 50, beginning with verse 8. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every wild animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and all that is in it is mine. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation.
You may now rise for the gospel reading. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. This reading can be found on page 10 of the back portions of your Bible in the New Testament, beginning with the second part of the 25th verse. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of far more value than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. A reading by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. O God, your creatures fill the earth. O God, your creatures fill the earth with wonder and delight and every living thing has worth and beauty in your sight. So playful dolphins dance and swim, your sheep bow down and graze, your songbirds share a morning hymn to offer you their praise. Each creature on this earth is a blessing. From the smallest little ladybug to the great elephants of Africa and India, God sees each part of creation, each blade of grass, each living animal living its life on earth, God sees as good. They bring God wonder and delight, and God desires that we also take wonder and delight at their glory. And the wonderful thing about animals is that they know their role without ever having to state it. Every blade of grass or soaring willow tree knows its purpose. They know their role. They're living just in the way God designed them to. They're the best dolphin or yellow-tailed woolly monkey that they can be. They live as they were made to live. How do we live? You made the pets we welcome in. They're wondrous blessings too. With paws and whiskers, wings and fins, they offer praise to you. O Lord, you call us to embrace these creatures in our care. May we show kindness, love, and grace to all pets everywhere. Our pets offer praise to God by bringing delight into all of our lives. They don't strive for it, they just do it. Their very lives, their very existence is a work of praise. What can we learn from them? How can we make our lives lives of praise just simply by being? And these animals are entrusted to us to protect and to care for by showing love to those whom God created first. We show love to God. You make the creatures on each farm. You know the things they need. May they grow healthy, safe from harm, and safe from human greed. Just as a shepherd loves the sheep, you know their joy, their pain. Lord, bless the animals we keep. May all farms be humane. We are aware of the ways that we have failed animals, especially animals of the farm. We have used them as corporate machines. We have made their very existence slaves to our consumption. May we be forgiven for supporting industries that use animals as products. 
and not as God's good creation for us to protect. We don't always exist in the ways God intended for us to. We don't always use our intellect for the betterment of creation. Sometimes we use it for our own wallets or our own cheap production. And until we face this reality, we cannot be good stewards of our earth and the creatures that dwell upon it. Forgive us, O oh God, for sometimes bullying the bountiful creation that you have made. May we learn to love all animals, even those who we desire to use for meals. May we think like those native to these lands who honored their kill beforehand and gave thanks for the meat it provided. Help us to honor our world and not to bring shame to it. Your creatures live in every land. They fill the sky and sea. O oh Lord, you give us your command to love them tenderly. We called to have dominion here, to care for them always. By loving creatures you hold dear, we offer you our praise. We have dominion, but we have taken that to mean that we can do whatever we want with the earth and with the animals our God has made. They were here before us, and we are called to be their protectors. We can offer our praise by respecting the wildness of animals, as well as caring for those who wouldn't survive on their own because of domesticity. And even though we have failed the earth and its inhabitants in so many ways, God loves us more than we can even imagine. If not even one sparrow will fall to the ground without our God knowing it and loving it, how much more can our God love us even with our failings? God knows each individual hair on our heads. God knows our innermost details and loves the whole complete picture of who we are. Do not be afraid, Jesus says, because you are of more value than many sparrows, whom God loves. We bear the very image of God. We were made in the likeness of God. What would happen if we acted like it? What would happen if we took pride and joy in loving creation? What would happen if we took responsibility for the earth and all its creatures? In some ways we already do, but there are always new ways we can live into our call as image bearers of the one true God. Let us take up the mantle of our responsibility and sing our praises to God through truly caring for our world. Let us live into our true identity and love creation in new ways. If creation were a piece of beautiful music, a full symphony orchestra playing this wonderful, joyful song, our being would be the final triumphant climax of the song, the part of the song that everything else builds to. But sometimes we forget this. We forget our own glory, and so we abuse the earth. But when we remember how magnificently loved we are, how treasured we are, we can take pride in our role as rulers of this earth. We can take ownership of the ways we have failed and the ways that we can rise to the occasion. God doesn't seek for us to live in shame, to hide our glory. God calls us to rise to our full potential, the completeness of our glory and our reign on this earth. And it is a great responsibility, but it is one that God knows we are perfectly suited for. So give praise this day to creation and give praise to our Creator. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, 
I think uh, more than one of you may know this song. So I fully expect to hear you singing out. I'm going to sing through the chorus of this once, and then I'll invite everyone to sing along. And the chorus will be in between each of the verses, and let's just sing out as nice and loudly as we can. Okay, so let's hear it. Listen to the top where the little bird sings on the melodies and the high notes ringing and the hoot owl cries over everything and the blackbird disagrees. All God's preachers got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or pause or anything they got now. Singing in the night time, singing in the day when the little duck quacks and he's on his way and the otter hasn't got much to say and the porcupine talks to himself. All God's preachers got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands or pause or anything they got now. The dogs and the cats, they take up the middle while the honeybee hums and the cricket fiddles. The donkey brays and the pony neighs and the old gray badger sighs. All God's preachers got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. And some just clap their hands for pause for anything they got now. Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus moans and groans with a big to-do and the old cow just goes Ooh. All God's creatures got a place in the choir Some sing low and some sing higher Some sing out loud on the telephone wire And some just clap their hands or buzz Good morning. The Lord be with you. It's wonderful to be here today. This is uh, really a, uh, a very special day. Uh, five hours ago, my niece in Duluth, Minnesota, gave a home birth to a brand new baby boy. <laughs> It's also a very important day, a big day, a day to celebrate because it's the first time we've invited our companion animals into the sanctuary. Welcome companion animals. You're welcome. Good, good dog, good dog. This is really about God, the triune God, and this dog over here. It's a manifestation of God's love for us to, to have these animals in our life. It, it's a healing thing that, that we have, uh, and we're very appreciative of it. And uh, that's one reason for our celebration today. 
I'm happy to be here and read the Sermon to the Birds, composed by St. Francis of Assisi in 1220. In the 13th century, these words were written. There's one word in the first sentence called um, bounded. It's really about being bonded to our animals. It's a very old word, but it, it's important because it's how we see in the manifestation God's binding to, to ourselves and all living creation. The sermon goes like this. My little sisters, the birds, much bonded are ye unto God, your creator, and always in every place ought ye praise him, for that he hath given you liberty to fly about everywhere, and hath also given you double and triple raiment. Moreover, he preserves your seed in the ark of Noah, that your race might not perish out of the world. Still more are ye beholden to him for the element of air which he hath appointed for you. Beyond all this ye sow not, neither do you reap. And God feedeth you and giveth you your streams and fountains for your drink, the mountains and the valleys for your refuge, and the high trees whereupon to make your nests. And because ye know not how to spin or sow, God clotheth you and your children. Wherefore your Creator loveth you much, seeing that he hath bestowed on you so many benefits. And therefore, my little sisters, beware of the sin of ingratitude and study always to give praises unto God. The Sermon of St. Francis.
come to the time for you to, if you would like to have your animals blessed. So we'll have two blessers at the front of each of the, of the seating areas. And just as it works for you, bring your animal up. If they don't come up in groups of 10 or 12, that's probably more helpful. But um, just sort of give yourself some space if you need it in between animals come up to one of the blessers that are there. So I think um, maybe Jack, you and Anel can be here. Uh, I'll be here in the middle with Janet. If you happen to have a cat, I invite you to take it to Janet because she's not allergic to cats. Uh, and if you happen to have a reptile, go ahead and bring it to me because uh, she doesn't like those. And uh, either one of us can take dogs. So that will work. And then uh, David and Rachel will be over here blessing animals. So uh, we have some music during this time. We invite you just to come forward, spend a couple of minutes with your animal to have it blessed, and we'll enjoy some music and blessing as this goes along.
invite you to stand. Let us pray. God of abundant creation, we give you thanks for this world that we inhabit. Help us to remember how to be good stewards of this place and to all the creatures who dwell among us. We are so honored by you, and you seek to give us the responsibility of dominion over creation. We do not take this lightly. We pray for all the pets who have given us joy throughout our lives, who are here with us in this space. We pray for our neighbor who is in need. Help us to share love and hope and to be signs of your great love for the world. We pray for those who do not have clean water to drink or who are struggling in any way. We pray for those whose spirits are down this week. We pray that you give them your comfort. We also rejoice with those who are rejoicing this week. We pray thanks for the birth of Grace Ann Glusenkamp, for the births of Cameron and Owen. We pray for the Gusman family at the passing of Mark. We pray for Kay, for Mai, for Nancy and her family, for Katie, for Terry, Marion, Mary, Nancy, Jerry, Renee, Arlene, Joellen, Rick, Fred, and Nikki. We also lift up to you all those names who have been on our hearts these past few weeks. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I think we've got some abundantly Bethany ministry opportunities to share. Hello, my name is Deb Rewerts, and I am part of the outreach ministry here at Bethany. And with uh, the outreach ministry, the big thing that's changed this year for outreach is we are going to change Be the Blessing to Living the Blessing. So with Living the Blessing, we need the whole congregation to be involved. We're going to have four times a year where you can go out and help in the community in different ways to service the community out there. After um, service today, if you want any questions about it, I will be in the fellowship hall, and I can let you know how you can come out and help us be um, Living the Blessing. So like we can't do it alone. We, it's going to take the whole congregation. It takes a village to take care of our outreach out there. So please come and talk to me after the uh, service, and we can talk about it. And you can bring your animals. To, well, they can't go in the fellowship hall, so maybe I'll be out in the courtyard so you can talk to me out there. Um, other things that is going on this week is that uh, Kathy Eggleston, they will be having at 7 o'clock on Friday. They're going to be having a celebration of life for Kathy. Kathy uh, was here for many years bringing us music, and there's going to be a wonderful concert in memory of her, of music for her. Another fun thing that we're going to be having is Trunk or Treat. It's a brand new this year on the 26th. That's uh, Saturday, the 26th at 1030. Come and decorate the trunk of your cars, and they will be. you can come in a costume too and hand out um, candy to the kids. And then the last thing is on the 27th, the youth, so many of our youth will be affirming their baptism through their confirmation, and it will be at the 1030 service. Just a reminder of that, if you've been coming to that service, it's a wonderful service, I, my, both my kids went through it, is that it is a little bit longer service that day, so plan for that. Thanks, and come visit me. All of these ways that we are in ministry together happen because we are a, our people of a God who is abundant upon us. And when we respond in abundance, well, ministry just comes to life for everyone. And so now as an act of worship, our offering will be received.
offering can come forward. And as our offering is presented, just a note about the end of our worship service this day. So we'll have our benediction and ascending hymn and then a dismissal. And if at that point you would like to exit, please feel free to do so. If you have an animal that's had enough, uh, or if you have enough of them, uh, whichever it is, feel free to, to go. But if you would like to stay for a brief liturgy and sharing of communion, we just invite you to come forward. You can sit in the first couple of rows or just gather even standing in here. We'll share in our brief liturgy of communion and then share that communion together. So those opportunities for you. In the midst of that, after the dismissal, give us a couple of minutes to just wash our hands and then we'll be ready for the communion service. As we go forth on this joyous day, may we remember the rain that we have, that we are stewards of creation, and that all God's creation matters. So may we be filled with the love, joy, and delight of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth singing our sending hymn, Let All Things Now Living, hymn number 881.
If you'd like to share in communion, please just kind of come forward right up in this area. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we're each just going to take a session right here and there. Just let them come and rotate in. And then whoever's got gluten.